So, Megan, your academic work was on prayer. I'm curious to know how that's affected your own practice of prayer or how you lead other people in prayer. Mm. Um, significantly, I mean, you can't turn off one bit of your brain when, when you're doing something else, can you? Um, for me, one of the joys of uh, saying the office uh, morning and evening prayer daily is that in the Church of England, certainly, um, we read a number of psalms a day. So I'll be reading the psalms mm. um, in a morning and an evening, be it on the bus or, you know, in an armchair um, and or in church, of course. Um, and uh, and I might suddenly sort of notice something I'd not thought about before. So, you know, I've got both bits of my brain working at the same time. Um, I'm just working at the moment on, on a book, um, A Psalm a Day for Lent and Easter. Um, for, uh, for Lent 2018. And uh, so I'm translating 46 Psalms. Um, and uh, so of course that comes with the sort of academic side of it, the, the close textual work, um, but then writing a thousand words on each one um, uh, for, for a very general readership. Um, one of the things that uh, I was just thinking about, because I often find that writing actually helps me to reflect for myself, um, was how lament um, can be used not only for ourselves but also a way of praying for other people whether or not we know them um, whether that's people in um, Syria or Aleppo for whom the words of the psalmist might actually be entirely appropriate so I've been reflecting a bit for instance most recently um, on using the psalms for intercession um, in that respect uh, and so that's that again deepens my reading of the Psalms as well as deepening my intercessory life.